Hi, we're Shannon and Jerry Arner. And our dog, Betty White. Your hosts of the Arner Adventures podcast. Could we have named it something more creative? Probably. But it's the name of our blog. It's our last name. We're on an adventure. Yada, yada, yada. After running our own business, working 24-7. And don't forget a mental breakdown in between. We made a lifestyle change and decided to make the most out of life. We sold our house, most of our belongings, downsized, and moved to the coast. We live life minimally, but fully. We live each day as an adventure. This show will help you learn how to live life more fully, with more intention, by experiencing more, and with less stuff. We'll talk about our own experiences, interview others who have much to share by creating a spark in our lives. Some days we'll share real life ongoings of what we're going through and others will talk about our favorite flavor of waffle. Come join our adventure. It's It's the the Arner Adventures Adventures Podcast. Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Jerry. And I'm Shannon. Betty White is here with us and we're back on the edge of 17, appropriate for today's episode, right? Yeah, right. Today's episode is just me and my mom, Beverly, when we get to it. We recorded the episode from our stateroom on the Celebrity Edge, much like you and I did, Jerry, when we were on our last cruise. Mm -hmm. But mom and I, of course, did it from our stateroom when we were on Celebrity Cruises So, you know, we wanted to saturate ourselves in the moment as we talked about it, much like method acting, except we're not acting. With cruising back open and travel back, you all submitted some questions, concerns, and we will address those on the podcast, but also in an in-depth blog as we did on the last cruising podcast. But before we get to the episode, let's get to the review of the week. Yeah, this is always a fun part of the episode. This review is from Nan the Real One, as opposed to... All the fakes out there. (laughs) All the fakes. Nan says... It took us a while to sort through all the Nans, (laughs) and we finally found the real one. Yes, Nan the Real One. I'm so glad that the real one came to us. But Nan says, this show is not just a bunch of fluff. The hosts are consistent each week with real talk, inspiration, and motivation from either things that they bring to the table or stories that the guests share. Each episode makes you take a look at your own life and realize what is really important and what isn't. If you are looking for some realness without a bunch of fluff getting in the way, this is the show. Looking forward to what else the Arners bring to the table as they continue down their podcast journey. Man, that is wonderful, but sometimes a little bit of fluff is good. But hey, Nan, uh, we like what you had to say, and so let's go with it. (laughs) Oh, gosh, Nan, that was awesome. That really was awesome. I don't, I I love that. I love, I love all, all reviews are wonderful, but. That's some of, that's out of my fluff arsenal there. I hope that was, uh. (laughs) <laughs> I hope that was sufficient. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Not too much of it, though. We don't want too much fluff. We don't want too much fluff, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to be our review of the week and get the chance to receive a gift from Sugar Wish, please take a moment and give us a five-star review or rating. We love, love, love your reviews and your ratings and your feedback. We have an easy link for you all to follow. It's lovethepodcast.com slash Adventures, but we will also link it to you in the show notes. It really helps us so much to support us in that way, and we really greatly appreciate it. So before we get to the episode, I want to say a few things about the episode. I already talked about how it's my mom and I in our stateroom. The second thing is, because that's a little bit different than me and Jer, the second thing is... I may have set a record for how many times anyone has said the word amazing in a 45-minute period. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) Believable. Uh, The next thing is that this was the last night of the ship. The waves were a uh, a little on the choppier side. If you have not cruised, fear not. I am... One of your more seasick people that you've ever met. I get motion sickness in the car. If I'm not driving and I'm not sitting in the front seat, I have to sit in the middle of the back. Uh, I cannot sit anywhere where I can't see. I get motion sickness at the drop of a hat. Like, all the time. So, I am taking non-drowsy Dramamine every day of a cruise. 
and that's fine. I still love cruises. I love even on a boat, if I'm on a friend's boat or anyone's boat here in town, in, in our town, Beaufort, I'm taking a, a non-drowsy Dramamine. So again, I don't want to scare someone off from cruising. It is the best. This is normal for me. The reason I'm telling you this is that this being the last night, it was just a little more uh, wavy. So I ran out of my non-drowsy Dramamine. And so the little sundry store on the ship was closed when I needed it. So I went down to the medic and they had something similar, but it was drowsy. So I had taken it. And as I was editing this part of the podcast, I noticed there were several times that I had repeated myself. I don't know. It just, I think I sounded a little off. So I didn't want you to think, oh my gosh, here she is. Like on the last, the last cruise episode, Jerry and I had had a few cocktails and we talked about that. I didn't want you guys to think, oh my God, here she is. (laughs) Having some cocktails again. <laughs> if I sound a little off, it's just that I had had some Dramamine that, that day and I was really tired and that was why. I That should sum it up. And, and, and for me and my raspy North Carolina pollen voice, I'll just say, can we get to the episode? <laughs> yes. And we'll come back later for the wrap up. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey, everyone. Well, as you already heard in the intro, I'm on the Celebrity Edge with my mom, Beverly. Hey. So we are in the cabin on our last evening of our cruise here with Celebrity Cruises, and we thought we would come to you to discuss how this week has gone. And with it being our last night, of course, it's the perfect time to wrap up how everything went, to let you know, you know, a lot of you had questions about, you know, with cruises, kind of picking back up with travel, we want to answer your your hot questions of, of, you know, the hot topic questions about embarkation, what you have to do to get back on ships, all of that stuff. But we also want to give you all the details about the week and, you know, just kind of get back into the nitty gritty and just get you all excited about traveling again. And cruising is a great way to experience different places and a, a great variety of, of all different kinds of things. So we're going to get to it. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, so since our last cruising podcast a couple of weeks ago, the CDC did lift the risk advisory for cruising, which is really great. However, many cruise lines are still leaving many of the safety protocols in place to protect travelers, which is also really great. We appreciate those additional steps. So no matter when you're hearing this, we recommend that you check with your cruise line prior to booking your cruise and before sailing, make sure that you're checking all the rules because they change all the time. So no matter who you're booking with, celebrity or anyone, make sure that you're checking, no matter what we're saying today, make sure that you're checking what the mask rules are, the vaccination, embarkation process, all of that. Because again, we did the last podcast and then two weeks later, something's changed. So just make sure that you're checking everything prior to your booking. So I think the biggest thing that we're going to talk about first, the biggest question we get is embarkation and pre-embarkation. Pre-embarkation process for celebrity cruises on the celebrity edge. Mom and I will talk about what our experience was. It did not hurt. We were, it was pretty easy. (laughs) It was pretty easy. Uh, So the pre-embarkation process and embarkation. Celebrity has an app which uh, seems to be sort of the the going theme these days with cruise lines. They have an app that we downloaded to our phones, fairly easy, and it walked us through the check-in process. We had to enter our vaccination information, our passport information. We also had to scan both of those. And then there was sort of like a, a, probably about a 12 hour, 24 hour process where they had to be accepted into the app. And then once they were, we were good to go. And then the day prior to sailing, we had to enter a health questionnaire. I'll tell you a fun fact. We also had to take a selfie, which we didn't think anyone would see. To be honest, we were filling out that information early in the morning. (laughs) And um, let's just say no makeup was had. No. And we just were like, well, okay, they probably just want to match it to our passport, which no one's thrilled with their passport photo. I actually like my passport. Okay. (laughs) Well, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so we were walking through this and we're like, oh, okay, they're just going to match it. Or it's going to be the photo that they look at when you're walking off of the cruise ship just or back on just to make sure that it's you. No big deal. 
And when we are embarking, which we're going to get through that process in a minute, we find out from this really nice gentleman who works with celebrity, oh, wait a minute, it came up and we saw it. And we're like, where, where do you use that photo? And he says, oh, everywhere. That photo is seen by all of the staff. When you check into restaurants, when you, everywhere on the ship, when you scan your C card, they see that photo. So he was nice enough to let us take it over. Yeah. And he, um, I think he knew to do something uh, to help us out because we had the looks of terror on our faces. <laughs> yeah. Which did not match our picture because <laughs> my picture, in fact, looked like something that was in your scariest nightmare. Yeah. So he let us, we had makeup on, we, our hair was done. We were very excited for our cruise. So we did not look like death in the morning. So he let us retake them. So note, you might want to doll yourself up a bit and get ready for that selfie for the app. Yeah, spiff up a bit. Mm -hmm. So we, you do have to take that photo. So, so do that as well. Um, so yeah, two days prior to two days prior to sailing, we also no more than two days prior to sailing, I should say. Correct. Right. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. two, no more than two days prior to sailing, we had to take a COVID test on our own. Um, so mom and I in our separate areas went to our own separate air. Uh, testing areas. I went to Walgreens. She went to Walgreens, but you can go wherever has a valid place to take a COVID test and where you can get your results pretty quickly. And we got those results. We both got them emailed to us, a PDF, a digital PDF. And we made sure that we had those available because we had to provide those results at the port prior to walking inside of the celebrity terminal. So while we were in line, they walked through the line and made sure that we provided that to them. Um, is that all that, did I get everything in the app situation? I think so. Okay. Think so that kind of covers everything for pre-embarkation. And then as far as embarkation goes, we walked into the port. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, inside the terminal, the celebrity terminal, and they verified that same information they had in the app, the same info. We had to provide our passport again, provide our vaccination card again. They made sure it matched up and then we were good to go. We were, we were wearing masks at that point. Yes. Yeah. So once we got onto the ship, masks are optional. And so at that point, everyone has uh, been vaccinated and they have tested, tested uh, negative for COVID or provided results that were negative for COVID. And um, so we removed our masks. It is, they are optional, but all of the staff on the ship are wearing them. Now, you keep it handy because at ports, some of the places require them, which we'll get into the ports a little bit more detail, but bring it on your trip, of course. And like, you know, when we were in Virgin Gorda, which we'll talk about, and in St. Martin, the shops and restaurants require that you do have a mask. So the ports and, and the different countries that you might visit will all have their different rules and, and things for, for masks. And again, check that prior to your cruise um, if you're taking one, but at the time of this recording, there were places that required them to, for us to be able to go inside. Right. There were even, even one of the ports for us to get off of a ship, even outside, mm -hmm. they asked us to wear it. On the, um, what is it called? Pier. Yeah. Couldn't think. Yep. Pier. And we had to wear from the boat down the pier to, uh, the port and then we could take them off. And that was a Virgin Gorda. Yeah. 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 So everyone has their own rules in their different countries, their different islands. So you just want to be prepared and be respectful of what the rules are. Uh, it should also be noted, and you know, we don't have kids and we did not bring children with us. So we didn't pay much attention to these rules, but we did hear that children, children are not allowed off the ship willy nilly. Meaning if you have a child with you here on this cruise with celebrity, children were not allowed off of the ship just to walk through the various countries and ports just on your own not on their own but like with with a parent so if you have a child here children are of course they're allowed to be on the ship unvaccinated but they had to test mom help me out here about the it's test a, it's a pcr test so it was a diagnostic test that they had to take um up to three days prior to the the cruise and it had to be negative so theirs were different it was not a rapid it was the pcr um, and I want to say that was kids from two to 11. Yeah. And then over 11, um, 12 and over could be vaccinated. Now they're allowed to be vaccinated, but they still had to be with parents if they were unvaccinated 
and they had to go on a celebrity right cruise official excursion, excursion. yeah uh-huh. they couldn't just go like parents couldn't take the kids and go into the port on their own they had to be on a celebrity um excursion yeah like an approved celebrity excursion You've all heard us rave about Sugar Wish. I don't think there's a day that passes where I'm not telling somebody about it. Sugar Wish is definitely one of those businesses where you ask yourself, why didn't I think of that? How many times have you wanted or needed to send a gift to someone and it was either one, last minute, or two, you didn't want to send just another gift that's going to lay around and take up space? Or you just didn't have any idea what to get the person. Sugar Wish allows you to send a sweet gift to someone and the recipient gets to choose their favorites. We've received Sugar Wish gifts and sent Sugar Wish gifts and they are always a hit. You cannot go wrong. It's super easy. You go to the website, sugarwish.com, choose the size of the gift you want to send, enter a personalized message and note tailored to the person you're sending it to. It arrives to that person or pup via email or text. The recipient then gets your message and then chooses what they want. They have so many options to choose from. Uh, Candies, cookies, popcorn, snacks, tea, coffee, wine. Yes, wine. (laughs) And Betty's fave, dog treats. Betty gets to choose from crunchy, chewy, jumbo, and training treats. It's perfect for your fur baby or the dog lover in your life. Use code Betty White. That's all caps. One word, Betty White, to save $7 off of your Sugar Wish gift. We also have the link in the show notes. Sugar Wish always saves the day. So, yeah, the other thing about children from 2 to 11 is that they also, when they got to the terminal, were tested again. They were, when they got to the port prior to getting on board the ship, they were tested for COVID again. And had to test negative prior to getting on the ship. So they had a little bit of different um, regulations. And protocols for kids. Yeah, protocols for kids before getting on. So again, that may change. Just make sure that you check that if you have kids. We don't have kids on this. I mean, of course, I'm mom's kid. But, <laughs> but I don't have kids. So there was no reason for us to pay much attention to that. But I know that some of you listening to this do. So I just wanted to make note about it that... Um, there are a little bit of differences between, you know, vaccinated and embarkation and all of that stuff for kids. But as we know, a few days from now, it could be different. So always check before getting on. Right. Okay. So another thing about safety protocol and uh, COVID safety are hand sanitizer stations. Of course, they are everywhere. They're outside of elevators on the ship, doorways, Uh, bars, pools. When we got into our cabin, they provided us with little hand sanitizers, the little concierge, the hostess stands have hand sanitizers. They're everywhere. Everywhere. You really can't go anywhere without having access to a hand sanitizing station. When we were on excursions, they were spraying our hands before we got onto a bus or a boat or anything. They, they want you to make sure that you have plenty of access to hand sanitizer. The staff on board are tested, I think, daily. I think they said daily, yeah. Yeah. The captain of the ship makes an announcement every day letting us know if anyone has tested positive for COVID and if anyone is symptomatic. And we really appreciate the transparency of that. I remember being at the pool the first day and there was a lady in the pool who said that she had traveled on a celebrity cruise during COVID, or right, I guess right, right when they before. opened, right when, right, before, right, right when they started back again. Okay. And she said how they had announced it every day. Yeah, that's right. And that's right. and we were kind of shocked by that. But then he did it. He, he started saying, okay, like that day, he said, mm-hmm. okay, we have zero tests. I mean, we have zero, you know, positives. And, you know, and, and talking about all the safety protocols they were putting in place. So we knew that he was going to do that every day then. And we really appreciate that transparency. Absolutely. In the main dining area near the pool, is this eating area that I know a lot of cruising people are very familiar with. It's called different things on different ships. This one is called Ocean View Grill. Um, It's sort of the main buffet heaven that that a lot of cruisers love. We're going to get into that in just a second. But there are, prior to going into that main dining area where you have like your pizza station, your salad station, your 
and they I don't know. divided up by uh, cuisine too. So they had Indian food, they had American food, they had um, the um, Lord have mercy, I can't think what what's in my head. Yeah, they had like oh, a big Italian. They had yeah, Italian. a big potato yeah. station and all different kinds of stuff. They had vegetarian, but it's your 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 traditional sort of just buffet heaven. That area had hand washing stations they had installed and i did read prior to getting on this cruise that they had installed those at the beginning when you get ready to go into that area they installed those encouraging people to wash their hands i kind of <laughs> i kind of laughed just thinking it's it's kind of funny to me that they have to encourage people to do that but you know i guess whatever reminds people to wash their hands and i guess maybe in addition to like yeah we've got the hand sanitizers everywhere so, I mean, I always appreciate clean hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do, too. Uh, okay. So, now that we're on the subject of food, um, I, I, I guess since we were just talking about Ocean View Grill and the buffets, l- let's go ahead and talk about that part, is that if you are accustomed to the buffets and you love that, I just want to make sure that you know that, yes, it still exists. However, uh, you do not serve yourself that the staff is there and they serve you. So if you are someone who just really thrives on the fact that you get to eat as much as you want, fear not, you still get to eat. Still get to do it, yeah. You still get to eat as much as you want and just, you know, gorge on all the food you want, but uh, the staff will be the ones serving you. Just to, again, it's a safety protocol. It's I'm glad for that. That was probably one of my biggest stressors about um the cruise was the buffet situation i just was really concerned about it i didn't want there to be a buffet so i'm glad to know that people can't just go up and start filling their plates and taking their plates back (laughs) hopefully that stays that way forever because i really like knowing that everybody hasn't been in all of the food i agree yeah i agree okay so on the food the restaurants and the and and just food in general (laughs) so mom and i were really treated well on this ship by celebrity uh we had access to the retreat now the retreat is an exclusive part of celebrity edge it's sort of like this vip access it gives you um like almost like a members only type thing Traditionally, it is the passengers who have uh, the suite level staterooms. They are the ones who have access to the retreat. However, I know that we did talk to some passengers who paid for access to the retreat. I'm not sure about the how how that works. The ins and outs of that. I don't. Yeah, um, I'm sure that if you got in touch with someone with celebrity, you might be able to do that. Mom, you talked to someone who talked about maybe getting kind of a deal with it. She said that they got a really good deal with it. So I guess it's part of a package. Yeah, maybe so. But we had access to the retreat. It was amazing. You definitely know that it is exclusive. Yes. Um, it is, <laughs> there's no words. There are no words. There are no words. It's almost like you, you've just been given, you know, VIP access, maybe like to some, um, like a skybox at a, at a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> it is super, super luxe. It's just, it's really, really nice. So with, with the retreat access gives you access to the, the super nice restaurant called Lumine. It is difficult to stray from Lumine once you have dined at Lumine. Lumine's menus each night were designed by Daniel Boulud. I don't know how to pronounce it. He is a Michelin starred French chef. He's a restaurateur who owns restaurants in New York City, Boston, D.C., Palm Beach, Miami, Toronto, Montreal, London, Singapore, and Dubai. Basically, he is just this star French chef, and you can taste it in the meals in Lumine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So mom and I got on the ship. We came to our stateroom. Oh, my God. It was amazing. We'll tell you about that in a few. And then we had this this letter inviting us to lunch in Lumine. We were like, okay, yeah, well, fine. We might go. <laughs> but we went... And then we were like, oh, this is Lumine. Okay, yeah, we got to come back here for dinner. Well, then we were just hooked. I mean, we just loved it. It was so good. Every single meal, we were trying new things, eating outside of the box, things that we had never had or, or cooked in ways we had never had these foods. It was just so delicious. 
it was it was just amazing I felt like I was on a food show <laughs> where they were bringing in all these foods that you didn't know one that you would like or you didn't even know how to pronounce them yeah and so you got to try them and oh my god yeah it's the perfect opportunity to try foods mm. first of all on a cruise when it's already taken care of part of your cruise anyway but having the opportunity to dine from restaurants or menus that are designed from this top level, yes. you might as well take advantage of it. Absolutely. And we did. We did. We definitely did. So um, we're going to get into some of the specialty restaurants in a few minutes, but um, we did venture outside of Luminae some. <laughs> <laughs> we had one specialty restaurant meal at um, the Rooftop Grill, which is this wonderful al fresco type grill that's um, literally on the rooftop of the ship. Uh, it was really beautiful outside, the evening sky. Um, it was just, it was beautiful. The breeze was blowing and, um, you know, anytime you can eat outdoors, it's a whole different vibe, but it was, it was really good. And I think it was more American food. Yeah. American grill, but a little more upscale American yes. grill. Uh, you know, like your actual backyard barbecue. Yeah. But then you were out in the middle of the ocean enjoying it and it was <laughs> and it was kind of quaint I mean, it, it was it was us and and not a lot of other people because you know well, the specialty restaurants which again we're going to get into in a few minutes uh you you um are paying extra for that so a lot of people are going to the main dining areas or they might be at lumine or they might be wherever so there's reservations for these and so we we were enjoying it with um not a ton of people you well, know we had a very late reservation we did we ate late and that night they're hard to get the reservations are hard to get. Yeah, it filled up quickly, and so that's why we had a late one. We also tonight, okay, so tonight we had our, our last evening dinner was at another specialty restaurant called Eden, which, oh my gosh. The Garden of Eden. It was like a garden. It it was just beautiful. If you go to the, our Instagram stories, you'll see a story of it on our highlight reel it is just if you like plants there's a lot mm. of greenery and plants and it's at the i always forget this is it the aft is it the it's back the of the ship aft, aft the back of, of the ship. ship it is absolutely gorgeous but the food again was amazing oh. it was a perfect last dinner on the ship the chef came out of the end and talked to us and asked us how the meal was chef andrea yep she was wonderful the the servers were wonderful everything Everything was wonderful. Since we have Aqua Class, an Aqua Class stateroom is the level stateroom we have, which sort of focuses on wellness, sort of lifestyle. Like we have yoga mats in our room, and um, we have access to the spa, which we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But we have access to a restaurant called Blue, and that restaurant focuses on clean cuisine, a healthier lifestyle, and that meal was really good. I think I had a, I think that was the night I had the plant based burger, but. Yes. It was really good, but when, when you have Aqua Class stateroom, you can go in there as much as you want. But when you say a plant-based burger, you're not talking about when you're going out to just your chain. No, not a Burger oh. King, not a Burger King Impossible Burger. No, no. No, this, this was, was this was top level cuisine. Yeah. It was really, really good. And it's gorgeous. The restaurant's gorgeous. Absolutely. Hence the the blue is like what do you want? It's the blues of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And like cobalt blue yeah. Oh, yeah. design and these blue roses. and Which are real. They are real. It's a decor um, concept that is so different from any other one. You have white, which felt like fabric or fiber um, roses on the, the wall, which appeared to be netting. Yeah. It was like a netting. A net, and then you had outside of it, you had pedestals with these half spheres of blue roses that were real. Yeah, I kept saying they're not; they can't be. They were real. Yeah, they're gorgeous. We touched them and found out that they yes. were. <laughs> yes, and a little piece came off, and so we knew then it was yeah. real, and we ran so nobody would see that we did it. Right, right. The specialty restaurants. There are six available, different cuisines. And like we said, they do require an additional expense. So if you venture away from like your traditional dining experience, they still have, you know, if you come on board, you get to choose, do you want like your 6 p.m. dining seating or your, I think it's an 8 p.m. Yeah. Um, you can still do those. We we didn't because we love Lumine so much. Um, and then, of course, Blue, and we had the two dining experiences. But the, the specialty restaurants, it's just next level. I highly recommend it. 
they do require an additional expense. And those range from about twenty to sixty dollars per person. Yeah, somewhere around there. But I think I just think it's it's really worth it, even if you can do it once on, on your cruise. Oh, yeah. You have yeah. to do it at least once. Yeah. Another thing about the retreat and a bonus is that when you have the retreat access, you have access to the retreat lounge and the retreat sun deck and the pool. So let's talk about the retreat lounge. Oh, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so the retreat lounge, again, like this VIP area, you have to have access to it. And you, there's a concierge. She will help you with anything you need. It's these comfy couches, uh, these comfy chairs or areas where you can work. Or there's um, that you have access to these fancy coffees or drinks. And uh, there are floor to ceiling views of the ocean. Um, oh, that was beautiful. Plants again, um, all over the place. And it it really was like home. You, mm-hmm. you felt like you were at your own home. Lots of sofas, traditional decor, um, just just a beautiful place. And then the food there. The food. So um, we enjoyed that so much that we started <laughs> the day there. Like we, we began, mom and I were waking up early each day. And so um, once we, you know, started getting our day going and, you know, doing our sort of our ritual things of the day, then we would sort of meet back up there and have our coffee. And so mom would have Mike make her a cafe americano americano every day Mm -hmm. yes and uh i would get the um latte macchiato and because of my trina allergy i don't traditionally eat breakfast but i do on vacay and because of my trina allergy um they would make me my own cinnamon bun that was separate from everybody else's and then it got to where every morning when i got there they just had it ready yep just had it ready and it's enormous. It's the size of my head. If you look at Instagram, you'll see it. There's a picture. It was just amazing. There's also a really funny reel where you get to kind of see the spread. It was amazing. Yeah, and I had the chocolate um, croissants every morning. And I'm pretty sure I ate my weight in them. They were so good. <laughs> they were really, really good. Yeah, and there's just this lovely, you know, classic or, or music. And, and it's it spa-like. Spa-like. I'm say it's yep. spa-like. Yeah. So it was just peaceful, serene. That is open 24-7. And we were up there tonight just kind of, you know, telling them goodbye. And it, it was just, it's just very, very lovely. It's just a lovely space. You can read. You can um, watch TV if you want. You can go to sleep. You can go to sleep. A lot of people just mm-hmm. would go in there, sit down, and they would fall asleep. Yeah. So nice. So the last part of the retreat is the sun deck and pool. So when you go to the lounge, then you can uh, go upstairs through the pool and the sun deck. And that is like your own space. It's your own uh, pool that only people who have access to the retreat have. And there are um, a few cabanas. There are these cushy, wonderful loungers. There are these um, like egg type hanging seats that hang over the pool. Yeah, so you have your feet in the pool while you're sitting in these chairs. Yeah. There's, of course, a hot tub. Um, Mm -hmm. bar during the day there's a little bit of nosh like you can have a caesar salad some fries i think maybe a burger burger, the specialty burger Mm -hmm. is supposed to be like the best burger in the world which it is very good yeah it was very good all the drinks you could want it was just and, and and you got to know everyone the bartenders got to know us of course it was like everyone got to know everyone and the great thing about this um not only was it you know, an area where you got to meet everybody and you got to be friends with everybody through the w- the week. It was at the top of the ship. And so you had yeah. like 180 plus degree um, views, unbelievable views. Yeah. I mean, we spent most of our time in the retreat mm-hmm. area. Yep. If we were, if we were on the ship, we spent most of our time in retreat level places. It was, it was next level. I don't know how we're going to cruise again and not have access to retreat. Right. And that's, that's the thing is, um, I've never cruised at this level, but I'll tell you this, it's, it's so worth the extra that you get from it. It's so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So all the food, the cinnamon buns, 
the pan of chocolates, the, all the stuff that we, the drinks, everything that we indulged in, all those calories, they have to go somewhere. Well, look, we, we, there's no way we got them off. We're going to have to get them off no, when we get home. No. But we did get our exercise in. The really great thing is that the ship has this walking trail, which was really neat. I've never seen this on a, tra- on a ship before. I've seen plenty of walking trails on ships, but this ship has a walking trail that begins on deck. I think it's 14 or 15. Look, I could stay on a ship for weeks and still never completely get the lay of the land, but I think it's deck 14 or 15 and you walk it and it, it has an incline that goes up a level, which means it goes up to 15 or 16. I think it's 14 and 15. Okay. So anyway, it goes up a level and then it goes around the pool. It goes around the rooftop. It goes around the rooftop uh, garden and then all the way around the ship. And so when you do it four and a half times, it's a mile. And the whole time you're seeing the ocean. So it's this really great walking trail. It's really nice. And then mom, you had yoga. Right. I'm a big yoga buff. And so they had classes here that you could take. So you don't have to stop your yoga routine. Um, And the great, oh my gosh, they give you yoga mats. You get your very own yoga mat. It's in your stateroom, in the closet. It's in a, a bag. So you just take the bag with you to the classes. And so you can continue your yoga practice while you're there. Or, you know, um, you can... We also did it in the room. Yeah, also in the room here where that veranda is, uh, that's sort of an extension of it, of our room, which we're going to talk about that in just a bit. Yeah, we could do it there. But I did do um, yoga in the room some in addition to. Mm-hmm. Um, they do promote wellness a lot on this on this yes. ship. So there's a lot of wellness activities, exercise, a lot of things to do like that if you want to um, keep your exercise going. So another thing that is really great about, you know, post-COVID or, you know, things that are different from the pre-COVID days are that tips are now included in the price of your cruise. And that is definitely different from pre-COVID days of cruising. Uh, We had a beverage package that was included with our cruise. So we didn't really have any expense that, you know, came out of pocket. We did notice on menus that there was still some verbiage on there that said that there would be a 20% gratuity added to the purchase of drinks, but we didn't experience that. So we're really not sure what that's about. So we know that there are going to be some situations where there might be some extra fees. So you just might want to check on that if you don't have a beverage package of, you know, how that's working. If you're, if you're purchasing an alcoholic beverage or a beverage that's not included, like a, you know, a tea or water or something like that, there may be additional fees. So just be prepared for that. And there may be, you know, uh, there, there are also other times where you may want to tip more, you know, the spa. I had a massage, which I'm going to get into that in a little bit. And in a situation like that, when you're checking out, there's definitely a situation where you would, would want to write in a tip. You may have a situation where you are checking out and, and you can add a tip. So tips are welcomed in addition in situations. And if you're a really nice, generous person, <laughs> then that is wonderful. But just know that like, if you're used to cruising, the days of when at the end of your cruise, all of a sudden they're asking for these big bills of, okay, now you owe $300 to the cruise line at the end because now that's going to be split amongst everyone. There's no more of that. No. that. That was already added in your cruise. Which was a great thing that happened because of COVID. There are some things that came out of COVID that we like. And that piece of it, the tip being included, was I think it's going to be a really good thing that has happened and probably will stay. Yeah. Yeah. I think people just want it all. Inc- just make it all inclusive. All make inclusive. it easier. You know, even if it's more, that's fine. If people want to take care of hospitality workers, they want to take, they understand the industry is struggling. They took a hit. Yeah. They really did. So just work it into the main price and let's just move on. And you know? be good to the service industry. Yes. I mean, I could go on a rant about that forever. Please be good. <laughs> Please be good to the service worker. We've yeah. seen some stuff, and I, I will never understand why you, someone is rude to someone in the service industry, restaurants, hospitality, it, it, folks. There, there's they're a, working hard. They're working them. really, really hard, and just have some grace and take a moment and understand that everyone is doing the best that they can. Okay.
And what I love about water? Well, other than living by it. Well, there are a million things to love about water. The sea life, the healing properties, part of the Earth's okay, atmosphere. Okay, all of that, but I love drinking water. Well, of course, but did you know that humans can only live a few days without water? Yes, yet so many people live a dehydrated lifestyle. Well, Liquid IV makes it super easy to stay hydrated. Hey folks, Liquid IV isn't scary. There aren't any IVs involved. No, Liquid IV is a hydration multiplier. It's a powder form, an electrolyte mix that you just add to your water. It delivers two to two and a half more hydration than water alone. They have all kinds of flavors you can choose from, and they have some with energy multiplier and immune support. Also benefit, they are non-GMO, gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy free. If you're someone who either has trouble getting your water in or maybe just wants to get in the express lane with your hydration, you should definitely try Liquid IV. For our listeners, if you go to their website, liquid-iv.com and use code ARNERADVENTURES, you can save 25% off of your order and get free shipping. That's awesome. We'll link it in the show notes too. Liquid IV, fueling life's adventures. Um, so let's move on to the spa. The spa is where everybody just needs to take a, <laughs> take some time and, and, uh, and rest and relax and, and, and just take a beat. So the spa, of course, is something that is wonderful. People love on vacay because it does help you relax. With Aqua Class, the, the level state room that we're in, like I said earlier, we have access to the thermal spa, which is the part of the spa that includes, um, things like the salt room, Steam room. There's a float room, which I'm going to get mom to talk oh, about that. I'm going to talk about that one. There's heated tile loungers, uh, rainfall water therapy room. There's a crystallarium. Um, and then there's, of course, the traditional spa services like massage, facials, um, you know, things like that. So you want to talk about the, the float room? Because that's a little bit different than something I've ever seen on a cruise before. Never saw it before. It's the chairs are swings and they're like the little egg chairs that's so popular right now and it's very uh zen like in that room everyone's quiet they're floating so to speak you're you're in that chair it swings a little bit you can close your eyes you can meditate the music is so um calming and peaceful and serene that it makes you really uh de-stress and you can actually fall asleep in there. There are so many places in that spa that you can fall asleep yeah. and have. Yeah. Have, and many people have. So that room is something that's completely different from anything I've ever been in. But it's called the float. So you can just float your cares away. Yeah. The heated tile loungers were like these, these loungers that um, bake in the sun all day. <laughs> they yes. bake in the sun windows all day. And... People are always sleeping in them. They're always sleeping in them. It's hard to get one. Yeah. Um, especially earlier in the day. And a sea day. A sea day. Oh, yeah. Sea day is a big one. But they they are so welcoming and they're shaped like toward, kind of like the contours of your body. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. They do nothing. There, There's nothing there except for the, the lounge chair itself with the heated tiles. But you get in it and you feel like you just had the most amazing treatment. Mm -hmm. And all you've done was lay down on those tiles. Yeah. And I recommend that if you are going to cruise and do anything in the spa, pre-book everything that you're going to do because it does fill up during sea days. And if you do have the aqua class stateroom and you do have the full availability of the thermal spa, it's wonderful. But what we did learn was either go very first thing in the morning or after one o'clock. After one o'clock is the best. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have aqua class, you can buy a pass to the thermal spa. So you just go and contact the spa and ask them about that pass because it might be different different prices for, you know, different things. And then, of course, I did have a massage on the first sea day, and it was absolutely amazing. It was my first massage since pre-COVID. It was life-changing. And you, you could tell because the lady told me that my back and my neck and my shoulders were like wood. <laughs> I was so tense. So obviously I needed it. Um, okay, so entertainment on the ship there are a ton of shows um, in the main area of the ship is this big bar, like in the, in the center midship. And the bartenders are always doing these like 
almost like co- like the movie cocktail, cocktail. Yeah. like throwing these bottles and glasses up in the air there's always entertainment things going on at the bars um there's live music all times of the day uh, we received an itinerary in the room each evening for the following day so that you know what's going on there's also things on the app and there's an announcement each day at 10 a.m from the captain and the activities director letting us know about exciting things going on on the ship okay so let's talk about aesthetic so from a ship aesthetic Nate Burkus, who if you are familiar with design or or Oprah, then you know Nate Burkus. <laughs> I love Nate Burkus. He is the design ambassador of this ship. And you can really feel that if you're familiar with Nate Burkus, you really get it as you sort of walk through the ship. Um, he specifically designed Eden Restaurant tonight that we were in, and I love Eden. So um, that was really exciting. Mom, you being sort of an interior design person, you might be able to explain that aesthetic. So Eden being a take on the Garden of Eden um, is designed with flowers, plants, and obviously the Garden of Eden. It's it's like that, but it also has this really kind of funky vibe that is mid-century modern. So you have the sort of the touch of the 50s and 60s. I want you to think about mad men in a garden, and that is what you have with Eden. It's a lot of the aesthetic of the show Mad Men, where you saw the 50s and 60s through there. Uh, take that, put it in the garden, and this is what you have with Eden. It is fantastic look back at what was a huge design period, mid-century modern. Yeah, and there was like this sort of random area in between like, blue, no, it was outside of blue. I, I, the way I described it, I said it reminds me of the, um, on Wizard of Oz, the, oh, the trees yeah, that, that you... Oh, that was so good. It was like going through the Enchanted Forest. Yeah. Yeah, it was so cool. It was, yeah, it was just kind of like, oh, wait a minute, what is this? And then you walk through it, and all and of a sudden you, you're Eden. Yeah, and... if you remember the garden, I mean, um, if you remember on the movie, The Wizard of Oz, when they were going through the forest where they had the apples thrown at them, that kind of scary music. Yeah. It was this suspense <laughs> music that you would go in there, and it was sparkle and dark but the trees were shiny gold so it was really eerie through there it was so cool yeah yeah so the ship its overall aesthetic is going to be comfortable home I would say lots of pillows comfortable seating that's your it appears to be the main focus here is comfort and uh com- comfort and home yeah all the seating and you know you're just talking about the the chairs all of the chairs are comfortable. Every single chair on this ship yeah. has its own design, its own um, aesthetic itself, but it's so comfortable. I don't care where you sit. It's comfortable. Yeah. And they are all different. Yeah. And they're comfortable. Yep. So the retreat areas that we talked about earlier are designed by an interior designer named Kelly Hoppen. And she had the, uh, but behind her name said CBE, and we had to Google this. And apparently CBE means that she has been given the title Commander of the Order of the British Empire. For her work in the Great Campaign, we're not sure what the Great Campaign was, but I'm sure she was really great <laughs> Yeah, in that campaign. Yeah, so Kelly uh, designed everything in the retreat. And it's like Mom was saying about the lounge. It was very at home, but very traditional at home Mm -hmm. um and i will say that extreme comfort but she really took time for the details there's so many little details which is what a really great designer will do i for one found myself looking at all these little minute places in there and we're just i was just um thrilled with what i was seeing in there but you know she's that's why she got the cbe Mm -hmm. yeah it's really nice so back to our cabin, the Aqua Class cabin. It's amazing. We, you know, I think my favorite part is this veranda balcony area that we have. It's it is more like an extension of the room. The way that it that it is, and again, you can go on our Instagram and see video and, and photos of it. But instead of a traditional balcony, they they this ship they they just kind of took more space out, so you have more space in the room, and it it has sort of a a window that is automated you just hit this button and the top window lifts and gives you the open balcony it's an extension of the room but it also can be um closed off if yeah. you want it to but the sun coming in and mm-hmm. it's just it's really great and it makes you feel like you're inside 
or it makes you feel like you're outside, however you choose. Yeah. And, and there are these um, sort of accordion doors, glass doors. Glass that, doors. Yeah. But yeah, the aqua class, it's wonderful. We have our own uh, concierge. He, he, he is wonderful. He takes care of us. We get an afternoon canapé canapé yes. and, and evening chocolates with turn down service it's just the best service like mom said we have yoga mats we have robes slippers it's 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 just next level I mean, it, it's amazing we cannot explain how wonderful the service has been on this trip um today knowing it was the last day and the last time we were going to be seeing so many of these staff mom and i were just tearing up and we're we're in the room now and we knew we were not going to be seeing some of these people at dinner tonight because we were doing dinner in Eden and we purposely could not tell some of the people that we were not going to be having dinner with them in Lumine because we could not tell them goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. They feel like family now. Yeah. They're not just, you know, people that uh, served you on a ship. They really, really get to know you and you feel like they're going to be at your next family reunion. I know. It really, it makes me sad now thinking about it. Uh, you know, with my tree nut allergy and mom has a stone fruit allergy, they, they've really been over backwards. Not just, you really, you really feel like it's not just with the allergies. I think overall, they really would have taken care of us. Oh, yeah. And with the hospitality industry, like we talked about earlier, the cruise industry being where it is right now, they all deserve so much respect. They all work so hard to keep us safe. And you know what's going on and, and their concerns on the ship and their concerns about all of us. And I'm sure that they're short staffed and probably tired. And the ship was almost at full capacity, which is wonderful, but I don't know how they do it. And I, I'm, I'm so grateful for the wonderful service that they provide us. And this is from the beginning to the end, every single area, they know us by name. And, and even like Stephanie and Lumine from day one, she knew, she knew our name, our names, everything about us. Getting to my favorite part of this cruise, last but not least, were the shore excursions. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, the shore excursions on this cruise were absolutely amazing. We had three ports that we stopped at on this uh, itinerary. We stopped at San Juan, Puerto Rico. And that excursion, we had an evening drive through San Juan that took us through old San Juan, new San Juan. Our, our tour guide was amazing he was a former teacher mm -hmm. a lot of history mm -hmm. he gave us a lot of history of san juan and we we were in and out of that bus taking so many pictures learning so much and it was just amazing uh we're giving you the very brief of this very but, brief, yeah. um it, our next port was tortola and when we got to the port at tortola we took a boat ride to the island of virgin gorda which i would have never known had even existed had it not been for this excursion, we would have just gotten out of the port at Tortola. Right. And never known about it. And then you, we, then we, when we, when we got off the boat at Virgin Gorda, we got on a bus and then got out of, off of the bus and then took this 15 minute trek to the baths of Virgin Gorda, which was at, like Devil's, Devil's Bay. Devil's Bay was the first little min, kind of mini beach. But you had to go under boulders and yeah, and then climb over ladders yeah. and caves and all this stuff. But the Baths of Virgin Gorda was absolutely amazing. Again, go to Instagram, you'll see it. It was amazing, so beautiful, beautiful, life changing. Would not have known about it if it wasn't for this excursion. And then St. Martin was, I had been to St. Martin before, and Jerry and I had, and we were on the French side, but. This time, Mom and I went to St. Martin, and we were on the Dutch side and went to Maho Beach. Maho Beach. And we spent the day there and watched the planes land and take off all day. So, it was not just landing and no. taking off. Oh, no. my God. So, this was like bucket list kind of thing to do. The planes landed and took off right at your head. I mean, you could feel it. Yes. Yes. Pretty sure if you were tall... That the landing gear would have given you a haircut. It it seriously is a bucket list kind of thing to do. You know, we thought, well, I had seen it on TV years ago. On but the Travel Channel yeah, and stuff. I thought I'd never yeah. see it in my whole life. And so when we saw this was an excursion, I was saying, Shannon, I think this is blah, blah, blah. And so we went. And you think you're just looking at planes, but you're not just looking at planes. You are looking at the landing gear. It was, it was crazy. But then... 
tell them about the, the jet blast. The jet blast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's fun to you know for the planes to land. You get a little bit of jet blast, but nothing like when they take off. Now we're talking like seven thirty sevens. We're not talking about little private jets. We're talking about the big ones. So they they start the runway right where you are. So when they start to rev up those engines, you start getting the jet blast. And then when they take off, you get the full effect of that jet blast. And there's a fence there that nobody is supposed to do this, but they do what they call fence surfing, which is very dangerous. Uh, don't try this at home. And they try to hold on to the fence and, and people have gotten hurt. So you don't want to do that. Yeah. But you stand there and you feel the blast of this. So it blows sand, and it feels like you just got sand blasted. <laughs> but a lot of people, myself included, could hardly stand up. It did knock me back a couple of times. But it's one of those things where it sounds so ridiculous that you want to stand in the jet blast of a jet airplane. But you have to do it. Yeah. yeah. You have to. You can dig your feet into the sand, and it'll mm -hmm. still knock you back. Yeah, it'll still knock you back. People lose their <laughs> they lost their, their glasses, glasses, their hats. Their hats, everything. It was crazy. It Everything. was it was crazy, but it was definitely bucket list. It was, it was yeah. We would not have been able to do that if it wasn't for these excursions. I would have never. Mm -mm. I would have never done that. No, and then all of that. It was the best day ever. It it really was. Yeah, it was the best. All of the excursions were amazing. We wouldn't have done it without celebrity. We wouldn't have done those excursions without this cruise did we say that we stood in the jet blast <laughs> of, of a jet <laughs> yeah it was great the excursions were my favorite part of the cruise i would say evened up with the amazing staff that we met on the show yeah, absolutely they were tied so what was that your favorite yeah i think the airplanes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, you probably can't tell by the excitement in my voice, but yes, that was, that was definitely, oh God, everything was, everything was so great. Yeah. You know, you, you hear us say amazing and great, but those are the best words to explain it. It really was. Yeah. Um, and I think seven, I think this was a seven day cruise and I think it was, you know, you never think it's enough. I mean, I, I would love to do seven more, but um, it, I'm sad, but I'm like, okay, yeah, I, th I think seven yeah, is it's good. A good. A week is a good cruise. Mm -hmm. It's really a good cruise. Yeah. Although I could stay here another week. I could. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if you, if you have any questions about anything, of course, let us know. And we'll be uh, putting the full detailed blog on the website, you know, giving you all that information. Mom, I'm, I love traveling with you. I love traveling with you. You're a great travel partner. You too. I love you. Love you too. Mom and I had so much fun, as you can tell. I mean, we I, we laughed, we we laughed, we cried, we just held hands and skipped <laughs> down the hallways. No, we did laugh and cry. I, I know we when we talked about the jet blast uh, uh, in Saint Martin. I am not kidding you. The videos of the people getting jet blasted. <laughs> and when I say people, we were getting jet blasted. But of course, I recorded everybody else getting jet blasted. <laughs> I was amazed. I knew they were doing that. And I had no idea what that was going to look like. That 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 blew my mind and, and, and made my day. It was getting a lot of getting something when somebody's on vacation is fun. But that was... That was fun, seeing that stuff. Yeah, and when we got back to the ship and we came back to our room, we were like changing clothes, getting ready for dinner, and I was just kind of looking at the video, getting ready to send it back to Jer, and I, <laughs> I was playing back the video, and I was about to wet myself. I mean, I played it over and over and over again, and Mom got out of the shower, and she goes, are you still laughing at that video? <laughs> I said, Mom, I can't stop laughing at these people getting blown away. And you, then you hear me screaming and like getting blown away myself. But as I'm turning my head away from the sand, I held the phone up, of course. So I see everybody like, oh my God, it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Go to our Instagram, you'll see it. It is hysterical. I mean, I think. Yeah, sunglasses <laughs> flying everywhere. Oh, my God. People running as if, you know, the wind is m m killing them. It's hysterical. I haven't <laughs> seen people scatter like that since the last Godzilla movie I watched. <laughs> they were. Oh, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, this cruise is just a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Uh, we did not mention it, but the cruise was almost at full capacity, which was like your traditional cruising experience again. So everything was back to norm. A lot of people on the cruise, which I'm not sure I was ready for. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I am glad. I'm glad it's, um, you know, mom and I met some really great people on the cruise, some people that I will continue to stay connected with. And it was great. Yeah, the cruising industry definitely needs our support. And oh my gosh, we need the travel industry as a whole. We yeah. have missed travel. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is a, we, we've talked about it over and over again. Travel is, is wonderful. It, it, it does so much for you, but cruising, if you, if you've been on a cruise, you know how wonderful it is. If you haven't, Cruising is a great way to sort of think it. Think of it as your restaurant sample platter. It's a great way to try different things and then figure out the next time you come to the restaurant what you're going to get. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm harking back to our the first cruise I ever took. We had our honeymoon. Uh, no, it was our second cruise in 2015, and we got to go to Key West. And we, th- and we thought, oh, those eight hours weren't long enough. And, and now we, we go all the going time. <laughs> yeah, we- and then we went back a year later on a full cruise. Uh, yeah, I mean, on a full on trip a full there. Trip. And now we go all the She's time. She's right. Yeah, we have been a lot now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just a great way to kind of get a sampling of places. And, and like Mom and I said, to do things that you would never be able to do. We went on excursions we'd have never been able to do without celebrity. So, anyway... Um, you can find out more about today's episode at arneradventures.com or on Instagram at arneradventures, also linked in the show notes. Uh, guys, we have some really great guests coming up, really inspirational people, stories that are just going to make you really just go like, like wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want a heads up of who we have coming up, make sure you sign up to be in the know. The link is in the show notes. We always send out an email prior to recording. Well, barring that they aren't booked last minute. So if you uh, are on that list, you have the opportunity to ask questions that we will ask on the episode. And you are just going to be really inspired by the people that we have coming up we're really excited yes indeed and so until next time enjoy the journey that you're on we're wishing you lots of adventures bye Bye.